We have here a 2005 and a half Volkswagen Jetta. In 2005 and a half, they changed from the Mark IV body style to the Mark V body style. The whole design of the car changed, all the systems changed, there were new engines introduced. Uh, hardly any of the old engines are used anymore, all the new engines are different. And the AC system changed, and that's what this video is about. The customer's complaint on this car is the AC uh, doesn't work sometimes. Uh, sometimes it'll follow the pattern of inoperative after the car first starts, and then it'll start working 10 minutes or so later, or after the system warms up. Uh, sometimes it'll just be random work, sometimes not other times. And uh, we know these systems pretty well. Uh, but I wanted to go over four keys to diagnosing this type of system. The AC system changed from a uh, compressor with a clutch on the front to a compressor without a clutch on the front. And so it is a clutchless variable compressor. And let me go over those four keys right now. The first key is that there is no clutch at the front of the compressor. Therefore, there's no clutch coil to turn on that clutch. Therefore, there's no wires to a clutch coil. Therefore, you, you don't diagnose anything to turn on the clutch at the front of the compressor. This is a compressor off one of these cars, and it is broken up here on the, on the uh, pulley hub here. With regards to that, there is what's called a mechanical fuse. Inside here, there are small legs that connect this hub to the center set of splines. And when the compressor locks up, this compressor is not locked up though, when the uh, compressor locks up, these legs break apart so that the belt will still spin. This compressor had a random failure of the hub here, and um, I don't know if you can see that, and it broke away there. The second key point to know about these compressors and diagnosing this AC system is that they have a refrigerant control valve commonly called RCV, but you might hear the term solenoid or freon control valve, but I'm going to use the term RCV trying to be consistent. Uh, this is an electric device. It does not control a clutch inside here, but it does control the amount of displacement of this compressor, or the output of this compressor. So being uh, what it is, like a solenoid, it does have a little valve inside of it, and that valve can stick, and it's a very common problem. Uh, Volkswagen does not service this part. Volkswagen will sell you a whole compressor if you need this part. Luckily, the aftermarket has provided uh, this part for us. This style has a snap ring in it. There's another style that bolts on there. Uh, I am talking about Volkswagens here. Here are the two most common types of refrigerant control valve. And this one takes a bolt and it plugs in right on the thing. There are some of them that have a wire lead coming off and that wire lead plugs in at the end of the wire lead. I don't keep that one in stock though. And this one takes a snap ring to hold it in right here and it plugs in right there. Okay, the third key in diagnosing these AC systems is to scan the HVAC computer for trouble codes. And this one has no trouble codes, but of course if it did have trouble codes, you'd want to diagnose these first before you make any other repairs. I have seen some of these with trouble codes in them, and just wasn't uh, making a YouTube channel at that point. But if I see any uh, trouble codes in the future, I'll make a quick video about those. And the last point is compressor shutoff codes. You go into measuring blocks, group number one, field number one, and you get compressor shutoff codes. And VAGCOM's real nice, it gives you all the compressor shutoff codes, and this one says number five, compressor off, engine start not detected. I don't have this engine running, so I'm going to get that shutoff code. It's not going to turn on this compressor uh, when the engine is off. Normally, if everything's working, you get a zero for the compressor being on. And I've fixed several of these. Refrigerant too high when the fans don't work. And refrigerant too low when it's been low. Maybe some of these other ones. You have to take into account the compressor shutoff codes. Now let me start the engine. See there, our compressor shutoff code went from 5 to 12, and 12 being 
compressor off, shut off via engine control module. So the engine control module was turning it off, but then it went to zero, compressor on. So this compressor, since it has a zero, me it should be on and working. So let's hook the gauges to it and see what it reads. So I hooked up the hoses to the car, there and there, low, hot, low side, high side. And this is what we're reading right now. 30 on the low side, 225, let's say, on the high side. Uh, take into account that today is a very cool day here where I work. And this is probably pretty normal readings. Now, remember this customer said it worked sometimes and not other times. So this is gonna be impossible to diagnose right now because it's working. And this thing's already cooling down to about 54 degrees and still dropping. So, like I said, this is an intermittent problem. So here's our pressures with the engine off. The only reason you'd want to check that is to make sure that there's enough pressure in there to the, so that the system will turn on. Uh, although these gauges read slightly differently, it's only off about 10 psi, I would say that uh, they're probably equal, but the gauges aren't calibrated perfectly. So let's start it up and see what happens. So here's the pressure that we're running. This was at 95 before and dropped down to 70. So the compressor is able to draw the low side down some. This was at 105 before and it's now up to 150, so the compressor is able to pressurize the high side just a little bit. But obviously this should be way lower, near 30 or 40 and this should be way higher. Now, as we look at this, we know the compressor's job is to suck this, the low side down low and to blow the high side up high. So the compressor's job is to suck and blow. So this should be much lower, this should be higher. So the compressor isn't doing a good job. And you might think that means it's got a bad compressor, but there is a common problem with these with the refrigerant control valve and this is what that would look like if the Freon control valve wasn't doing its job. We're here underneath the car, and you can see this is the style that takes a bolt. It's a little Allen head bolt. I've already unplugged the connector there, but the Allen head bolt takes it out. This can be a little bit difficult to get out. One thing that helps is uh, the AC machine draws a vacuum on the system in order to evacuate the Freon. So it helps to reach inside the Schrader valve with a tool and push down on the Schrader valve to release any vacuum that's in there. Uh, but this one with uh, the bolt There it is where it sits in its natural position and you twist it around and you can pry right in here and get it out. You can hear, probably hear the vacuum. If it was the other style, you definitely want to release the vacuum because you don't have this uh, ear to pry against right there. So with the new refrigerant control valve on, that's what our pressures look like. Take into account this is a very cool day here, so this would be low, 
based on the temperature of the day. And after running a few minutes, our pressure is, is even lower on the low side, about the same on the high side. Fifty-two point seven and still dropping. Looks like fifty and still dropping. This would obviously cool even better if we were cruising down the highway. Uh, the compressor RPM would be higher and the airflow through the condenser would be better. We'll take it for a short drive. Getting ready to leave for the test drive and it's already cooling down to 46.4. That's pretty good. I'm actually driving and videoing, but it's a nice cool day here, so don't take this as the golden standard, but this car is cooling all the way down to 37.8 degrees. It's going back up now since I've come to a stop. Well, once again, this video is about the differences between the clutchless compressor and the older generation compressors with the clutch. And to diagnose them and fix them, there's four things you need to remember. Number one, don't have a clutch. And number two, the refrigerant control valve sticks a lot. And you saw the pressures on the gauge when that happened. And number three, you have to check trouble codes because it is a computer controlled system. And number four, you have to check shutoff codes in the measuring blocks in order to diagnose the system. Uh, ever since I've been making videos, I haven't had any problems with these, with the shutoff codes, but I have fixed several with shutoff code problems. Maybe we'll have one with a trouble code or with a uh, shutoff code coming up, and I'll try and make a video about it. But if you like this video, like and subscribe. Visit my website. And that my website is www.kansascitytdi.com.